Jim Bones Mackay's game wouldn't win him a PGA Tour event, but it's not a big deal. He has enough major tournament victories to his name as one of the most recognizable caddies in golf history. In this video, we'll let you know how Bones made it into the hallowed society of golf's greatest loopers, how this golf nerd met his wife, and the truth of his divorce from Phil Mickelson. You might be asking, is Bones Jim Mackay's actual name? Like, did his parents look at their baby and go, oh, he looks so much like a Bones? The answer is nope. He wasn't called Bones until Fred Couples forgot the name of the skinny six foot four inch tall caddy. It happened at a dinner in Paris. Bones was standing across the room and Couples needed his attention, but he couldn't remember his name. Thankfully, no one said, it's Jim, Fred. The unplanned rechristening would have been avoided if someone had done that, and we would have never had Bones. Of course, we would have Bones in our bodies. We kind of need them, you know. So when Couples got tired of trying to figure out Jim's name, he yelled, Bones, and continued using the name for the rest of the trip. That night, in 1990, Bones was born. Not Jim Mackay, he was born on May 8, 1965. In Jim's words, his new name stuck. However, in Jim's life, nothing else sticks out like his time as Phil Mickelson's caddy. The pair became a classic example of how a work relationship can transform into a deep friendship. Bones had always dreamed of caddying for the world's best golfers. As a kid, he admired Bruce Edwards, the man who worked Tom Watson's bag. It seemed like the best job in the world. His obsession with golf earned him a golf scholarship at Columbus College, but he wasn't a spectacular player. It was during this time he got the job at the Green Island Country Club in Columbus. This job brought him closer to tour pros, and one of them was Larry Mize, the 1987 Masters winner. During this period, he carried the bags of different players to hone his caddying skills. After he graduated from college, Bones got a job as a financial analyst for Synovus Bank. He had a stable job, but when he learned Larry Mize had an opening for a new caddy, he jumped at the opportunity. He literally begged for the job, and playing it safe, he requested a two-year leave of absence from Synovus to test this uncertain path. However, caddying was paradise. Once he tasted life on the PGA Tour, he was sucked in. He knew there was no going back for him. He was also lucky to work for cool bosses, like 1987 US Open winner Scott Simpson. On their first day together, Simpson let Bones know he could take a job from better players if the offer came his way. And that offer wasn't as far away as Bones might have thought. Phil Mickelson was about to enter the pro game after ruling the NCAA and winning a PGA Tour event as an amateur. Steve Loy, Phil's college coach turned manager, had met Bones as a player. And years later, when he needed a caddy for his star, he thought the lanky guy could do the job. Legend has it that Bones had sent a heartfelt handwritten letter to apply for the job. And who wouldn't? Caddying for Mickelson was a nightmarish dream job. You wanted the best view of some of the best golf shots. But you also knew his cleverness could catalyze his downfall as it has done on many occasions. They were made for each other. Bones was the guy who would do anything to help his boss win, and Mickelson was as competitive as any other golfer on tour. For instance, Bones attended the 1993 Ryder Cup just to get a feel of the competition's atmosphere before he and Mickelson played in their first Ryder Cup in 1995. This story by Hunter Mahan's caddy, John Woods, says everything you need to know about Bones as a caddy. Woods was sharing a room with Bones when an earthquake rocked the Golden Nugget Hotel in Las Vegas. During the quake in the middle of the night, the first thing Bones did was run to the corner where he kept Mickelson's bag and gently lay the clubs on the floor. If that's not dedication to your job, what is? We'll tell you. How about crying uncontrollably when your player wins? If anyone needed to know how much winning meant to Bones, he showed them as he replaced the flagstick after Phil sunk his last putt to win the 2013 British Open. Oldest major, Phil Mickelson was open champion. It was Phil's fifth major and only claret jug after many times of asking. One of the reasons Bones was crying was because they started from the bottom and then they were there. When asked why he was sobbing like a child, Bones said, because the first time I caddied for the guy, he didn't have $10. Now you know why Phil always goes for broke. They shared a brotherly love that was the envy of the tour. Even their wives were best friends. Amy Mickelson and Jen Olson had been best friends since college, so Jen spent a lot of time around the Mickelsons. 
Incidentally, Bones was also always around. He became friends with Jen but refused to date his boss's wife's BFF. It took a lot of prodding and pushing from the Mickelsons, both parents and kids, to get the Mackays together. They were so involved in the union that the knot tying ceremony happened right in their backyard. And when it was Jim's turn to support his friend during Amy's battle with breast cancer, he was right where he needed him, by his side. After 25 years of chasing golf and glory, starting with Phil's qualifier for the 1992 US Open, they had won 42 PGA Tour tournaments, including five majors. And the six runner-up finishes at the US Open will haunt them forever. They had a great run, and they both seemed amicable during their split in 2017. Mickelson thanked Bones for his service, and Bones wished him continued success. Tim Mickelson, Phil's brother and former coach of Arizona State's men's golf team, had come in as Jim's replacement. Before carrying his brother's bag, Tim had been John Rahm's agent and a former player himself. But was there something they were not saying? Something was fishy, and Alan Shipnick fished it out. In his biography of Mickelson titled Phil, the rip-roaring and unauthorized biography of golf's most colorful superstar, Shipnick provided some context to the sudden end of the duo's relationship. Surprisingly, there was a flag problem. You see, traditionally, when a golfer wins a tournament, the caddy gets to keep the flag of the last 18th hole. But Mickelson wasn't keeping his end of the deal. He was keeping the flags as souvenirs for his family. After the breakup, though, he sent Bones a couple of the flags tainted with his signature. One wonders if he was just punishing Bones for being bad at cleaning left-handed clubs. The other revelation was less sentimental. It was about money. Mickelson reportedly lost over $40 million to his gambling problem between 2010 and 2014. But somehow, he wasn't able to pay Bones some money. According to the story by Shipnick, Phil was owing Bones $900,000 at the time of their separation. So Bones, in fact, fired his boss and not the other way around. Thanks to his time on the course with Mickelson, he was a renowned caddy, and he wasn't out of work for long. He turned down multiple opportunities to return to the course as a bagman. Instead, he opted for a job behind the mic. He took his towering knowledge of the game to NBC Golf Channel, where he worked as an on-course commentator. Before scooping him up for the broadcasting job, Tommy Roy, NBC's lead golf producer, had caught Jim's potential while eavesdropping on his conversations with Mickelson. It's funny how a fly on the wall might one day be your boss. But you know people never get over their first love. Jim's schedule at his new job allowed him to caddy once in a while, and he got to serve some tour players on his off days. One of them was Justin Thomas. His first game with JT was the 2018 Sony Open in Hawaii. At the time, he was just a stand-in for JT's Hall of Famer caddy, Jimmy Johnson, who was injured. JT had said it was a one-off gig, but they would team up again for his victory at the 2020 St. Jude Invitational. In 2021, the two finally quit joking around and started an official partnership. Apart from his wealth of experience, it also helps that Bones is old enough to be JT's father, and his wisdom has been a bonus. After JT won the 2022 PGA Championship for his second major, he revealed that Jim's pep talk before that final round at Southern Hills had been crucial to his victory. JT might be happy to have Bones, but Bones is just as excited to have him. He had told his wife that JT was the only player that could get him back on the bag. And this time, he got his flag. Bones has had a winning life. Still, his old boss at Sonova's bank, James Blanchard, a member at Augusta, asks him every time when he'll return to work. But Bones typically just smiles at the joke. He knows he's had a fulfilling career. Luckily for him, money is not a problem. Unofficial estimates put his net worth at around $5 million. But whatever the real number is, it's definitely in the millions. On the ESPN Plus show America's Caddy, Michael Collins gave an insight into how golfers split the cake with their caddies. He said, Every caddy gets a weekly paycheck, no matter where his player finishes. If the player misses the cut, the caddy still has to get a paycheck because the caddy pays for all of his own expenses. Airfare, hotel, car, food, all of it. If the guy makes the cut, the standard is 10-7-5. 10% for a win, 7% for a top 10, 5% for everything else. Now, knowing Bones spent 25 years with one of the winningest players in the game's history, it's safe to think he got a good chunk from their several wins. 
That money allows the boy from Red Hill, Surrey in England, who only became a US citizen in 2000, years after his family moved to New Smyrna Beach, Florida, to live a modest life. He lives with his wife and son and daughter, Oliver and Emma, in Scottsdale, Arizona. If you enjoyed this video about Jim Bones Mackay's lifestyle, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. See you there!